So thanks for the introduction and for giving me and my co-authors the opportunity to present this work. I'm going to present a statistically consistent routing of a species trees under the multi-species coalescent model that is a joint work with Sebastian Rock and Tandy Warnell. So um, in phylogenomics, a core problem is to estimate the evolutionary history of a set of a species. So for example, here we can see um, four species and a tree that describes their evolution. Uh, and to estimate this evolutionary history, we usually use the genome sequences of these species that can give us some information um, about how closely related the species are. But a common phenomenon is that um, the true evolutionary trees in different regions uh, within the genome, which are called gene tree, can be different from each other uh, and from the species tree, can have different topologies, as for example, we can see in this, uh, this uh, figure. Uh, and so this makes the species tree estimation from multi -like data sets particularly challenging. Um, and so this is called gene tree discordance that it can have several causes. For example, incomplete linear sorting or ILS, gene duplication and loss and horizontal gene transfer are examples of these. Uh, and in this talk, we will only focus on ILS, which can be modeled by the multi-species coalescent model or MSC. So um, MSC is described in this figure. Uh, it models a random process that describes the way alleles coalesce in populations. And when two lineages fail to coalesce at their common ancestor, for example, uh, like what has happened in this yellow box here, uh, it results in incomplete linear sorting that can create uh, the opportunity for gene tree discordance. Um, and under the MSC model, the species tree defines a probability distribution on the gene tree topologies and uh, it can be recovered uh, from this probability distribution. So the focus of this talk is rooting species trees as rooted species trees have multiple applications in biology. For example, they're useful uh, for studying adaptation by diversity comparative genomics. But um, most species tree estimation methods produce unrooted trees. So what we usually get from these methods is a tree such as the one at the top. But uh, what many biological analysts need is a rooted version of it shot on the bottom. And therefore, we need additional tools that can uh, root and unroot the species tree. And so uh, there are different approaches that can be used for this problem. Uh, a traditional method is outgroup routing, uh, where a species that is known to be evolutionary distant from the taxa and the input set of a species is added to the set. And then uh, a species tree estimated, is estimated on this expanded set, and the edge that divides the in-group and the outgroup determines the position of the root. So outgroup routing is commonly used, but it can have challenges. Uh, and so because selecting an appropriate outgroup uh, can be challenging for some data sets. And uh, a second group of methods are distance-based methods that use the branch lengths of the tree to uh, find the root based on a specific optimization criteria. Uh, but many of these methods are sensitive from deviations uh, from the, uh, to sensitive to deviations from the molecular clock. And, and finally, uh, the third group are gene-based methods that uh, use a discordance between gene, tree, uh, gene trees and species trees to uh, identify the position of the root. And so um, the first two groups do not consider sources of gene tree discordance, and the focus of this talk is a uh, third group, and specifically uh, routing uh, in the presence of ILS. So uh, a property that, uh, in designing uh, methods for species tree estimation, a property that is uh, desirable and important is a statistical consistency. And informally, an estimation method is called a statistically consistent under a model if its output converges to a true parameter as the number of input samples increase. And here, the parameter is the topology of the species tree, whether unrooted or rooted. And uh, the input samples are gene tree topologies. And so, um, in the past decade, several, uh, there has been a, a large literature on uh, proving statistical consistency for species tree estimation methods, and several uh, methods have been proven statistically consistent for estimating the unrooted species tree topology, but uh, no consistency methods uh, for routing methods uh, before, uh, no consistency proofs for routing methods before this work exists. So uh, it's a well-known result that under the MSC for four or more species, the unrooted topology of the species tree uh, is identifiable from the probability distribution of the unrooted gene trees. Uh, and so this result is proved by Allman, Degnan, and Rhodes in a paper in 2011, and it has been the basis of several uh, statistically consistent quartet-based uh, species tree estimation methods. Uh, a good example of it is Astral, which is now commonly used in biological analysis. Uh, and so the main, I mean, the main idea behind the proof of consistency of these methods uh, is a property that for four species, the most probable unrooted gene tree has the same topology as the unrooted species tree. And this means that if we compute the, uh, prob the frequencies of the three possible quartet trees, the most uh, probable one or the dominant one will give us the species tree topology on this vortex. Uh, 
Um, and this property does not hold for more than four species, and as we will see in the rest of this talk, even the case of five taxa is much more complex. Um, there is also another result, uh, identifiability result, again by Alman, Degan, and Rose. I will call them ADR, henceforth, uh, that says that for five or more species, the rooted topology of the species tree is also identifiable from the probability distribution of the unrooted gene trees. And so to prove this result, uh, ADR derived a set of linear invariants and inequalities on the probability distribution of unrooted gene trees, and they proved that this can be uh, used to identify the roots of the species tree topology. And so we recently used this uh, identifiability result to develop a method called quintet routing or QR that was presented in the ISMB last year. And so QR is a method for rooting species trees under MSC. It takes as input an unrooted species tree and a set of single copy gene trees and the same leaf set as a species tree, as well as a cost function, which I will explain in detail later. And then uh, it outputs a rooted version of this tree that minimizes uh, the cost across a selected set of quintets. And so um, this paper focused on uh, the problem of rooting uh, under MSC from a theoretical perspective. Um, so we show that QR is not guaranteed to be statistically consistent under the MSC, but we uh, introduced a new method called QR star uh, that is uh, statistically consistent under the MSC and has, um, and so the difference between this and the previous method is uh, mainly in the cost function as well as it has an additional uh, step in its algorithm. And so um, in the rest of this talk, I will sketch the main ideas uh, behind the theoretical results and finally go over some empirical results. So to get us started with a the theory, uh, we first need to look into the properties of quintet or five leaf trees. Um, on five taxa, there are 105 rooted binary trees and 15 unrooted binary trees. Uh, and each unrooted five taxon tree can be rooted on any of its seven edges. So for example, on the left, we can see an unrooted five taxon tree uh, where its edges are marked with numbers and rooting it on any, uh, so on one of these edges will result in one of the trees on the right. And generally, the topology of rooted five taxon trees can have three different shapes, which are called a caterpillar balance and pseudo caterpillar, as we can see in this figure. And so uh, the inequalities and invariants derived from this uh, identifiability theory by ADR define a partial order and a distribution of unrooted gene trees. And this partial order uh, for each uh, rooted uh, five taxon tree, this partial order can be shown with a HACCP diagram, as we can see an example in this figure. Um, so here on the left, we can see a caterpillar tree and it has a diagram. Uh, and so in this talk, I will show the 15 uh, unrooted uh, five taxon trees with T1 to T15 and their probabilities with U sub I values. And so uh, each circle in this has a diagram defines an equivalence class, meaning that all the gene tree probabilities inside that class must be equal. So for example, uh, here in class C4, uh, there are, um, so U4 should be equal to U13, and this defines an invariant. Uh, and each directed edge uh, between uh, two classes uh, shows an inequality where uh, the probability, the gene tree probabilities uh, and the, at the source of the edge must have greater values than the probabilities at the target. So for example, here uh, in class C4 and C6, uh, we need to have U4 greater than U5. And this is an example of an inequality. And so an important thing to note is that uh, this has a diagram only depends on a topology of the five taxon tree and is independent of the numeric parameters or the branch lengths of the tree. Um, and so according to this ADR theory, each of the 105 rooted binary trees correspond to, to, uh, to a unique HACCP diagram, and the shape of this diagram only depends on a topological shape of the, the tree. And so um, in this slide, we can see examples of the three possible um, HACCP diagrams for the three topological shapes. And so uh, a main component of QR and QR star algorithm is a cost function that measures the fitness between uh, a quintet distribution uh, estimated from the gene trees uh, with a partial order of a rooted five taxon tree. So um, to see this as an example, here we have uh, the probability distribution, the U vector that I mentioned before, um, on the uh, gene tree, quintet gene tree topologies. And then here we have, uh, again, a caterpillar tree with a HACCP diagram. And so uh, we want to, and the goal for defining this cost function um, is to, uh, so measure the fitness so that uh, the cost gets minimized for the rooted five taxon tree that best explains uh, the inequalities and variance in this distribution. And so what does that mean? So um, we define a violation for an inequality where uh, according to this HACCP diagram, two uh, 
so one, um, one quintet distribution should be greater than the other, but uh, the reverse of this is implied by the distribution. So for example, here uh, we have U9 should be greater than U12 according to the Hassett diagram of this rooted tree, but um, here we have the reverse of it in this distribution. And similarly, a violation for an inequality uh, it happens when two gene tree probabilities that should be equal according to this Hassett diagram are actually unequal in the distribution. And so um, here we can see the cost function that we used uh, in the QR algorithm that uh, is simply a linear combination of these invariance and inequality penalty terms. And similarly, we can also uh, look at the uh, violations between uh, two different rooted trees. So for example, here we can see three uh, different caterpillar trees. The only difference between these uh, is in their leaf labelings. Uh, and also, they imply uh, hazard diagrams with the same shape, but they have different, uh, but with a different combination of the UI values inside their uh, classes. And so, um, we define a set VRR prime uh, as a set of violated inequalities between two rooted quintet trees. So, to see an example here, for example, uh, if we consider the tree R R1 and R4. Uh, we can see that uh, the only difference between their inequalities is that here, we, uh, so the Hazard diagram of R1 implies U3 greater than U2, and the Hazard diagram of R4 implies the reverse of it. Uh, or for example, to see another example, um, for R4 and R7, uh, we have two inequalities that are different, and so here the size of this set V uh, is equal to two. Um, and so here in this heat map on the right, we can see uh, the um, set, the size of the set VRR prime computed for all possible routings of an unrooted uh, quintet tree shown at the bottom. And so uh, we can see that um, uh, other than these uh, zeros that are on the main diagonal that are comparing the same tree and uh, so they should be zero, there are other zeros as, as well, meaning that there are some trees, uh, some rooted five faction trees that have no conflict in, the distrib in their distribution. And so the main idea behind the lack of consistency of this uh, QR algorithm is actually uh, that no matter how large the number of gene trees are, uh, it's, it's, it's impossible to distinguish two trees um, that uh, have no conflict in their distribution. Uh, and so this is, uh, so the main idea behind our new method, QR star, is this observation that pairs of trees with the same rooted shape, meaning that caterpillar balance or pseudo caterpillar trees, always have conflicting distributions. Um, so if we again look at, look at this heat map, um, and only look at the trees that have the same shape, for example, like uh, this part of the plot that is only showing the first four rows and the first four columns that are only for caterpillar trees, uh, we see no zeros, meaning that uh, we always have conflicts between the distribution of these trees. And so um, we use this observation uh, to, uh, deter so we use this observation in the idea that uh, we first determine the topological shape of each quintet, and then we incorporate the topological shape in a cost function of um, this QR star method. And so here we can see the cost function. Uh, so the, ma the main difference between these two is this uh, additional penalty term, which is, which is the shape penalty term, that compares uh, the shape of a rooted five taxon tree with a shape estimated from the uh, quintet distribution that is estimated from the gene trees. And uh, the other difference is that we prove the statistical consistency for a large class of optimization problem based on the weights, meaning that uh, no matter uh, what the weights that are used uh, for these inequality invariance and shape penalty terms, the statistical consistency holds as long as these are uh, negative, non-negative or uh, strictly positive. And so now the question is how can we differentiate between these rooted shapes? How can we estimate that uh, shape penalty term that I just mentioned? So here we use uh, another observation uh, from these um, basically has a diagrams. And so that is the class sizes. So if we look at the class sizes uh, for uh, these three possible uh, shapes, we can see that uh, the class size for the pseudocaterpillar trees always have uh, size eight. The class with the smallest probability always have size eight. But uh, for caterpillar and balanced trees, it has size six. And um, similarly, the uh, class with the second smallest probability has size four for balanced trees and two for caterpillar trees. And so, um, um, and so we use this, um, 
Yes, so and uh, we basically uh, use, uh, so when we have uh, different, uh, so, uh, excuse me. So we want to differentiate between different rooted shapes given a finite data. And uh, it's likely that none of the invariants from this ADR theory exactly hold, and so class sizes cannot be directly determined. Uh, what we do instead is that we first sort, the gene, uh, sort these um, quintet distributions, and we then look for the uh, gaps between, uh, significant gaps between these probabilities. And so uh, in order to um, do this, uh, we use tools from the probability theory uh, to find a bond for this gap, which, which is called AFK, that is based on uh, the number of gene trees and a set of uh, quintets. Excuse me, this, is the time ended? Was it 20 minutes? Okay so, okay, so let me end, sorry. Yes. And so uh, just to wrap this up, um, so here we can see um, the proof sketch. We proved that as the number of input gene trees increase, the probability that the first step of uh, QR star correctly determines the rooted shape converges to one, uh, and the cost of the rooted quintet becomes arbitrarily close to zero. The cost of any other rooted quintet is bonded away from zero. and. Um, so, um, and yes, so this, uh, finally, we get that the probability that the queer star correctly roots the given unrooted tree converges to one. Um, and so, I will just briefly go over the algorithm. Here, uh, the input is an unrooted species tree, a set of unrooted gene trees, and we uh, sample a linear set of uh, quintets, and uh, we use these quintets to determine a topological shape. And then uh, we, we use this in a pre-processing step to compute the cost, as I mentioned previously. And then uh, we basically sum over uh, the cost of all the selected quintets to compute a score for each tree. And then uh, the tree with a minimum score gives us the root of the species tree. And so this is just a comparison between QR star and its preceding method QR. Uh, what we see on simulated data sets is that um, in most model conditions, it improves uh, over QR, and uh, the only exception is uh, the top left panel, which is for the case with the highest ILS. Uh, and, uh, and also, this condition has a very high gene tree estimation error. Um, and so this is the only condition that we found that this uh, is worse than QR, and in, uh, yes. And so to wrap up, QR star is a polynomial time statistically consistent method for reaching species trees in the presence of ILS. It's based on uh, identifiable theory of uh, rooted five taxon trees uh, from unrooted gene trees uh, under MSC, and it has improved accuracy over its preceding method. Um, and so with that, I would like to thank my co-authors, members of the Warren Lab for the feedback and all the funding resources. Uh, thanks for listening.